have to go ahead, please. Thank you. Hello, Hello how, are you how are you? How are you doing? Not too bad. I'm very well, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, what what is there to say other than congratulations? Oh, um, I don't know. We could ask about the weather or <laughs> <laughs> um, whatever. How, how does it feel to um, have uh, delivered your second album? Um, we're very relieved. Um, I'm trying to think. It, we, we had a great time recording it um, on a little boat on the River Thames. Um, it, just, it just feels like we, yeah, we've got to go out there now and, and play it, learn how to play it. Mm -hmm. That's a bit terrifying. <laughs> now, obviously, um, I'm sure the band have always had high expectations. I think even from you know when K was released. Um, do you, you know, have you sort of sat down and thought, okay, this is this is the album that's uh, going to make us the biggest thing, um, you know, of 1999 into the new millennium? I don't know. I, I think it's probably dealing dealing with those issues. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, we, we, we've often we've we've been quite fatalistic in our attitude to sort of where it would take us and. Mm. Um, I don't know, try and expect nothing, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we would try. Yeah, because I mean, I think that, you know, as far as Kula Shaker are concerned, you, right from the word go, um, I think you've been very well embraced from, you know, from the media side, I, I think also there was a lot of expectation on the back um, of the delivery of the first album because there was so much hype, I think you delivered on that, but um, obviously yeah. this, this is the difficult second album. It is our difficult second album. We, we were talking about recording the third one now. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> yeah, the third one, second. Yeah, or just, no, before the second one. And not re releasing the second one third. But, I don't know, we, we thought all these different plans to avoid the, the dreaded second album. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but, um, sorry, did, did you actually take, um, take everything in, obviously, that had happened since that first album, and then, obviously, when you released Hash as well, um, to, to the point yeah. of, of fashioning the... The, uh, the new album according I think yeah that certainly affected it you know going on the road for two years affects your playing um, and also what we, we got a chance to do a little short film I don't know if you've heard that before um, no. you know that film Wonderwall yes yes with, yes where George Harrison did the soundtrack mm -hmm. um, well the, the director he's did a little run of it again and he's putting out a short film with it um, called Reflections on Love which was made at the same time but never had a soundtrack put on it okay. um, and we got the chance to basically it was a 15 minute short film with about half a minute's dialogue Stunning. so we got to do all the music for it which was great um, and it just meant we could do anything you know mm -hmm. I think that really started us off on the album just that idea because obviously we were wondering what the bloody hell are we going to record you know what are we going to do yes um, we recorded Rade Rade for this film and then that went on to the album. It was just that idea that you could do anything you wanted. You know, mm, mm, quite mm. a liberating experience, that. Mm, mm, mm. Be because I think, you know, sonically, uh, Kula Shaker are a band who have, um, I think, had a lot to do with the, the fashioning of, um, of of where, you know, current new music is going. Um, you know, obviously with you incorporating all the elements that you do, would would, would you would you agree? That's very kind. Oh, I don't, yeah, we're part of that soup that's out there. I, I, I don't know, it's hard to say, and I wouldn't like to say. But Yeah, but I mean, it's, it, it, in somewhat it's, uh, it's refreshing that, uh, you know, that, that, that you were that ambitious, that you, um, that you wanted to not just carry on doing what the mainstream was doing, but obviously give, give them something new. Yeah, certainly. No, we've always wanted to do that, be have something fresh but I mean that's just being honest isn't it and just I think if you, you are honest it's, um, it's kind of what we've been playing you know around clubs and pubs in London you know, and that sort of thing and even when we were doing our eight little late track demos we'd do loads of overdubs and be quite, quite ambitious even when we were you know nothing sort of thing so yeah, yeah. Would it's always been something that's there with us yeah, because I mean, trying to push boundaries and all that. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think that's obviously been your um, your saving grace in the sense that you, you know, that you that you haven't followed. You've rather been the one to follow. Yeah, we're on our own course here. We're not even sure where it's going, but it's quite, <laughs> it's quite unique, all the same. Yes, yes. Oh, but that's good. Um, Thank but, you very much. But as as, as far as 
the music is concerned. Um, it's certainly not a repeat of K as far as the new album is concerned. Um, are you more comfortable now um, doing what you're doing? I think so, yeah. I mean, obviously K was very much a learning process at the same time. And it became obvious that after, you know, we'd recorded it that we weren't entirely happy with everything that's on there. And, um, and we're not entirely happy with everything that's on this album. But um, it's, we think we've made a better album than K. Uh, and it was just we had the opportunity to sit down you know over the whole of last summer and basically record this album and not leave till we you know we were happy whereas with K there was a lot of pressure you know we stuck a single out before we'd even recorded an album and that got into somewhere in the charts I don't know but you're under a lot of pressure then to go off and tour and and then recording an album was like an afterthought so we'd be in a studio for a week here and then go on the road and then come back for a few days in another studio so mm-hmm. we didn't have as much time as we would have liked maybe to record K or didn't give it enough attention you know? and it was we were learning it was our first album mm-hmm. and I mean I think we have I think hopefully we come on to the <laughs> well yeah I th- certainly I mean I think the new album yeah. uh, just you know listening to it uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks I've uh, I must admit, it's it's certainly an album that I think will um, embrace an even wider audience. You know, people who maybe didn't didn't hear K or maybe had heard it but weren't a fan of the band. It certainly seems to be more accessible. Yeah, that's good to hear. I, I hope that's the case. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I think it can be a case, especially with a you know with a band like yourselves, when um, you've got a lot to say. Um, there's a lot going on around you in the sense that, um, mm. you know, it's not just straight up and down um, lyric content and um, also um, your influences obviously are there as well. So there's, it's quite a busy, you know, you, you're quite a busy band as far as everything that you epitomize. That's it. We're not singing We Love You Baby and, and deciding on which backing track to pick. So I think exactly. that's not a case of that, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, is that I mean, is is it a case of that the you know the influences are the you know are the are the deciding factor as to how you fashion fashion the music because you've got so many um, influences in there um, and you're trying to incorporate yeah yeah I think um, with, you know with any sort of music you um, you write about what's you know affecting you or what what's you know provoking or whatever whatever you, makes you think you know? yes um, um, so yeah obviously those things and, and you know we've always had mad old kooks hanging around us that have you know lived out in India for years and, and they'll come back and they would you know they'd stay with us when we were had a, we were all sharing a house in London so you'd hear all magical stories you know this is going back seven or eight years we'd get all these magical stories um, you get to travel out there and then you're living in London as well I don't know there's a whole Because I'm, I'm sure, you know, I, it's, it's a case of um, when Kula Shaker came out and obviously those influences there, everyone was going, North London band, um, you know, and obviously everyone does that terrible thing where they, where they reference back to, you know, to what the Beatles did. Um, but I'm sure you, mm. were, you were painfully aware that that was going to happen. Um, oh, too right, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, they I, like to put labels on your head. <laughs> it is terrible, I must admit, you know, because if you had been the first and the Beatles had come second, they would have done the same to them. But, I mean, how do you... How do Indeed. You, is it, would you say that that's just a case of people not getting the plot, or, um, or yes, it is so? Yeah, it's missing the point a bit, because, you know, obviously we we're, you know, a band in the sense that we got guitars and we have a hammered organ and we have real drums and these things, and people... Um, say, oh, you're retro, write you off because of that, because they think you're retro, but it's just, we, we admire a lot of those classic rock sounds, you know, but mm-hmm. I think that's just what, a, you know, a band sounds like, that's, you know, it's the sound of the guitars and drums and bass together, and then mm-hmm. it's what you do with that and what you bring to that that makes it different, and exactly. obviously the songs you write and mm-hmm. everything else, and, and in that sense, everything's retro, everything harks back to something else, even, sure. you know, you look at the most modern dance music, harking back to Tangerine Dream, which was happened, you know, almost mm. thirty years ago. Mm. Now, so yeah, I, I think there's nothing. Because mm, I, I just think your only crime was that you made it so obvious. <laughs> mm. You know, we'll be we'll be a bit clever next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, obviously, to the benefit 
um, of yourselves because I, I think, yeah. you know, um, I think Kay, Kay um, was certainly very, very well received. And, um, yeah. you know. And there's a lot of tracks on there that are just fun, you know, we're just having a laugh. And oh. I think people miss that as well. They miss the humour in, in some of the music, so, mm. which is a shame. It is, because I think that's obviously why you do what you do, is that uh, you enjoy what you're doing. And, and we do, it's fun. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and you get... I think people, people misunderstood us. They thought we were um, terribly um, serious and meditative and all of these things. Yes. And, which isn't really the case at all, you know, we're just, we're getting on with it like everyone else. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as being a band, um, you know, um, are you guys very sort of, are, are you at a point where, you know, the relationships are, are very solid based on all the focus that you are now going to get again? Yeah, I think that's the one thing we've got going is the, the four of us are all very close and I think that does come from living with each other. We all, we don't live with each other anymore. I think we'd go mad if we did. We live with each other on the road now. So uh, yeah. you're very close and you're kind of aware that it's, yeah, you you go around touring and you're surrounded by madness a lot of the time. So mm. it's good to keep that little unit a bit sane. Mm. And I think Not totally. That would be boring, but yeah. Mm. Because I think also now, I think what's important for the band is that, that um, people don't sort of break down what Cooler Shaker are about to the point of saying, well, you know, uh, Crispian's got his link and, and musically you've got that link. I think this is the album that's certainly going to establish you without, because of, because everything else is now common knowledge and people have moved on from that, they're going to grade the music purely on the music, which I think is where it needs to be. That would be lovely if that happened. We'd, we'd be very happy people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how that happens. The press in England can be a little tough, so we're, we're always ready for that. But yeah, certainly, um, that would be nice. People concentrate more on the music than, than anything you know, else. Because... Um, it's been parentage or whatever. <laughs> true, no, true. Because I mean, but I think, you know, yeah. Kula Shaker did very well in establishing themselves in the UK, um, and I think uh, to a large extent in Europe as well. But... Um, yeah. No, are you we want to build on that basically and just mm. yeah spread our wings and, and get out there basically. Are, are, are you ready for you know for a territory like the US where yeah, sometimes it's even harder? Yeah, I mean we went out there on K and we did a few tours. We were quite lucky that in that they actually played our songs on the radio, which is I think the hardest thing to mm. get over out there because um, obviously all charts are based on radio play and stuff, mm. but. Um, we got some plays on alternative radio and college radio out there, so there was, it was nice. We'd go out there and we'd be like a little underground band, which mm. was quite, it was it was great, you know, and you could go around and play clubs. And, mm. um, it was a good experience. We also, you know, you get to play places like Fillmore in San Francisco, you know, and obviously a lot of our heroes have gone through that there and played there. Yeah. And like Love, The mm. Doors, Hendrix, all, all those, so, mm. um, it is good, I so we'll be going out there again. I guess we want to get wherever we can, that would be mm. good. Mm. Because in, yeah. I, th I think in a way, you'd, um, you know, which is I think part of the fun as well, is that um, in some respects you can retrace the steps of um, of the bands that you you know have uh, so much respect for as well. That's it, you get to hear all these stories. We had a chance when we were recording, started recording this album, we were out in LA um, in January of last year working with Rick Rubin and George Rakulis, we're working in Ocean Way Studios where yes, yes. they recorded Pet Sounds. Yes. So, um, and that was about the same time as the Pet Sound session had all come out, so okay. that was that was great, so, you know, and you're sitting in this room and mm. just listening to some of these session tapes, you know, that had obviously gone in that room. Mm, mm. It, it, was, it was great. We met Van Dyke Parks, who arranged all the strings. He came down to the studio one day and helped us out. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was great. <laughs> well, I mean, I think in a lot of respects you're getting to live, uh, live your, uh, live perhaps a dream, you know, as far as, uh, you know, your fascination with, with, with music in general. Yeah, no, that, that's it. We're, we're very fortunate in that we can just do that, play music and make a living out of it. Mm. That's all we ever wanted to do, you know, mm. and that's a dream in itself. Mm. And now, uh, Chris actually made, um, um, 
well, made the statement that um, you were going to play um, at the pyramids in December. Um, <laughs> at some point, I think. Don't be booked. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. John Michel's up. He's, he's there. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. I think we go, we're going to stay in with a cup of tea now. I think that's <laughs> We're boycotting the year 2000. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> no, but it, it's interesting that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, coming up to the millennium, um, I'm sure, I mean, everyone's talking about it now, sadly, and they waited until this point. Um, you know, is, is Kula Shaker a band that, um, you know, are, are too YK compliant in the sense that they'll be bopping them, you know, along in the year 2000? I don't know. I think it was, it's, it's weird. We'd always, you know, it's, it's just another number. Mm, um, but um, I, I just think it's a nice time, it's a good time for people to reflect, you know, when every, every new year comes, there's always new slips of the events of the previous year and mm. people kind of, it's a reflective time and mm. people, you know, there's like the idea of a new year's resolution to go forth and try and better yourself. And, mm. I think if we're coming to the end of the millennium, then we just look back, or we'd even look back on the last hundred years, just, you know, it's good time for reflection and to move forward, and I think it's time for us, you know, as a planet to do that, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken a lot, a lot of wrong turnings along the way, you know, and it would be good to sort of retrace our steps somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or just, get, you know, to get back some of the things that we'd lost all the way. I mean, that's part of the fascination with India is they still have that, that you know, that link with their roots, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it goes back thousands and thousands of years and we kind of lost touch of that um, mm -hmm. in the Western culture, you know. Mm -hmm. It's all, all the, the mighty dollar rules, you know. True, true. It's, it's, which is sad, really, because there's more to life than just that. Okay. I think certainly you look, look at cities, uh, these days, and there, there is that idea you're surrounded by people, yet um, everyone's kind of a bit lonely, which is sad. So, mm -hmm. because I think as a band, should... sorry, yeah, no, you, you can't. I'm sorry, <laughs> no, I was just saying that as, as a band, um, obviously, um, understanding and embracing you know, those concepts, um, I think in some way, um, you are um, you are helping that process, you know, when. When people who listen to the music actually get get the lyric and actually get the themes that you, you know, that you are um, sending through in the music. That's the idea, you know. It's good to, to hear that. Yeah, we are just yeah, a small part of that. Mm -hmm. You hear and you hear people talking about these ideas. You know, I guess we yeah, we're a part of that, which is mm -hmm. good. And the there's is, other people and there's mm -hmm. other artists and stuff like that, uh, singing, writing, or whatever. You know, they're putting new ideas forward, so it is good to be a part of that. Yeah. Some people have called it the silent revolution, you know, mm -hmm. this idea, this, this, you know, just interest in something more than just, you know, what you're given, you know, you know this sort of material world that you're given, you know, mm -hmm. people that just start to look beyond that and want a little more out of life. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so well, it's I, good to be a part of that. So. Well, exactly, and I think also just from the point of view that, um, you know, that it's coming from you know, from a UK source, in the sense that um, you know that your basic first world can perhaps maybe it'll make more sense to them coming from you than it would directly from you know from the source that you got it from. Certainly, that that would be true. Yeah, and we're talking. Yeah, I think. Yeah, obviously the pop market will relate to us. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> sure. Which you want? Yes, and I think I think you're doing pretty well at the moment. I think um, you know I must admit um, that uh, the title of the album is is, is brilliant. Um, it, That's fun, that, yeah. Mm, a lot of fun in that. Mm, um, that was, I mean, um, it was a, a lot, an artist friend of ours drawn a sketch, you know, of, a, of literally a peasant and a pig and an astronaut. Mm, Maybe there's a couple of peasants, I don't know. Mm, but they go through a door saying the procession of pig, peasants, pigs and astronauts. And there's loads of different interpretations, but it does it, it feels like, you know, this, you know, the world plodding along, you know, and there's all these different types of people and we're kind of leaving it up to, you know, the listener to decide who, what characters they are, whether the the astronauts are the, the people with all the knowledge that are going forth, you know, or maybe they're just disappearing off into outer space without a clue, you know, and the actual peasants with their feet on their ground and their earthly knowledge know it all, you know, the simple folk like, mm -hmm. like the river man in Siddhartha or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. 
Um, so, you know, it, it, it's it's very open to interpretation, which is good. Mm. But the idea of being different characters, these three different characters, the peasant, the pig, and the astronaut. Mm. I think it's... So you, let, let people decide. Yeah, and it's sort of, I mean, you, you could say in a nutshell that it probably epitomizes uh, the world as we know, you know. In, in mm. 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 Yeah. Um, Alonzo, the idea. <laughs> I, have, I have one last favor to ask you, if I may. Okay. Um, I'm going to be using this um, for print uh, media as um, as well as um, do an edit of it for um, a radio show, which I do on college radio here in South Africa. Um, okay. Would you be able to do, say, perhaps a short ID? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, great. If you could... Right, well, um, the, the name of the show um, is The Cutting Edge. It's very cliche, but what can I do? Um, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> um, That's all right. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you could you could just say something like "Hi," you know. Um, I'm me from that yeah, band. From that band cutting you know, edge. Pretty much, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, whenever you. Okay. Want. Hello, this is Alonzo here, calling all the way from London town. You're listening to Cutting Edge. Excellent. I didn't mention I was in Cooler Shaker there. Maybe I should yeah, do that. Do that again. I'll do that again. <laughs> Hello, this is Alonzo from Cooler Shaker, calling all the way from London town, and you're listening to Cutting Edge. Thank you very much, sir. There you go, that will do it, brilliant. I think so, <laughs> yeah, we've got two takes there, so. But uh, thank there you so you much, go. and um, I just have to say congratulations. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I've been um, hassling uh, uh, Columbia here in South Africa for the last couple of weeks, so. Um, That's good. Whereabouts are you based? Um, in Johannesburg. In Johannesburg? Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Yeah, in Johannesburg. Joburg? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, Good stuff. I, I once went out with a girl from Joburg. Oh, did Very you? Very nice lady. Yes. I did, yeah. Her name was Joe as well. Oh, that's go. easy. <laughs> <laughs> Not an easy name to forget. But um, No. We, we hope at some point that um, that um, your sales here can justify a visit, which I think they will Indeed, be. Indeed, let's hope so. It'll be good to go, go somewhere. It's, it's always nice. The weather should be good if we... Um, Choose the right time of year. Get yes. over there. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can prepare the Durban poison and, and the rest of it. Absolutely, yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> but, but, but thank you so much. Okay, thank you for talking to me. Thank Cheers. You. Good luck. Bye. 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 Bye.